Over. You know, then some chords. From the British pop revolution of the 1960s emerged an entirely new breed of musician, a post-Beatles, post-psychedelic generation that saw a future of limitless possibilities. It was time for pop music to move beyond the three-minute love song and chart success. With little or no concern for fame, fortune or the audience, they plundered every musical form on an adventure into uncharted territory. This is the story of that generation of new bands. Yes, Genesis, ELP. There was an audience of newly educated sort of university students who were just crying out for something that they've read in science fiction and they wanted a sort of musical version of that. And of course there was The Lord of the Rings and there was uh, Merlin Peak and Gorman Gast and people wanted that in their music. They wanted to be songwriters, but bands were now playing their own material, so they formed their own band, called it Genesis, and did what every other group now seemed to be doing, retreated to the country to get their heads together. We hadn't really experienced much outside education. So I suppose in a way that's partly why we wrote more about, I suppose, fantasy lyrics, uh, different situations about life rather than, than boy-girl things. In 1970, Crimson Man Greg Lake, plus Nice Man Keith Emerson, plus Crazy World Man Carl Palmer, equaled bass, keyboards and drums, equaled Prog Rock's first supergroup. Equaled ELP. Psychedelia may have quit, you know, as a fashion in 1968, but when I had joined Yes, I was still a psychedelic guitarist in my mind. I would not play blues cliches for, for, for love and the money. There were funk elements, there were classical elements. You know, there'd be a freeze section or some sort of psychedelic vamp or a funk thing. And then, of course, at those times, every lead singer was six foot six, long, greasy black hair. He could smell them from the back row. And on comes this little fella who's got an alto voice. Yesterday morning came a smile upon your face. We like audiences that uh, sit down and listen to the music rather than uh, get drunk and pick up girls. What we started to realise was our audience are rather kind of nice and reserved people, you know. You know, fishing hats, great coats, bunch of albums under the arm. Pipe, pipe and glasses, yeah. Beards and stuff we used to have. It was very male orientated. Uh, I would say in those days, 95% of our audience were male. You never said females come to see us. Lots of guys, no girls. What is this, some kind of homo band or what, what is it? There was the odd woman, mostly dragged along, who just uh, used to look bewildered. The prog rock movement really stimulated the visual aspect as well as the playing and the conceptual side. The visual thing was now, theatre was important. Started with that kind of psychedelia period, Arthur Brown, wherever, and went on and got developed. We just refused to play anything that sounded anything like a timpanani pop song. So if it sounded at all popular, it was out. So it had to be complicated, it had to be more expensive chords, it had to be have strange influences. If it sounded like you know, too simple, we would make it more complicated. We'd play it on 7-8 or 5-8 just to show off. <laughs> 